paper is a very useful material. You can write on it, ship things in it, glue it to your wall to make it look nicer, that, and if you're bored you can fold it into a star and throw it at your siblings. But, I hear you ask, can you build a train out of it? Short answer is no. The long answer, however, is... the sometimes. In the early days of railroading, the wheels of passenger carriages were made up of either one of two things, cast iron or wood. Cast iron wheels were tough and lasted a long time, however, any impurities in the iron would ruin the wheel, and the friction from the carriage's brake blocks would often cause them to fail in colder winter months. There was also the problem of noise, as the older carriages of the time had very poor suspension, causing any vibrations from the wheels to be sent straight into the carriage. In the 1840s, Mansell wheels came into use in the UK. These were made of a cast iron hub and a wrought iron tyre, with the main body of the wheel being made up of wood. These were favoured more for use on passenger carriages, as not only did the wood help dampen the noise in the carriage, but also any casting faults in the metal would be more likely noticed during assembly. The only issue was, these wheels had a much shorter lifespan than other parts, necessitating the wheels be serviced more frequently due to some of the segments of wood coming loose in the rim. Both of these were reasonable options when it came to functioning as wheels, but then in 1868, a Mr. Richard N. Orland found another material to make wheels with. Paper. Orlan and his brother-in-law ran a company that produced straw paper. However, with there already being a plentiful supply of it, Orlan, being a former locomotive engineer, decided to experiment and see if he could use paper to improve upon the design of wooden wheels. He glued together circular sheets of paper in layers and compressed them with a 650 ton press for three hours, then letting them dry out for several weeks. Afterwards, the wheels were machined on a lathe, had several holes drilled through them and sandwiched between two iron and plates. Both bolted in place, one ring to secure the tyre and the other to secure the hub that connected the wheel to the axle. After doing some testing, it was found the wheels were more durable than their wooden counterparts, while at the same time being soft enough to dampen the sounds the wheels made from grinding on the rails. While still not as durable as cast metal, they more than made up for it by offering a smoother, quieter ride for passengers. Orlan opened up a business selling these wheels in 1868 and got a patent for the design design in 1869. Despite being sturdy, the idea of a paper wheel was quite a joke to many. That was until George Pullman caught wind of the idea and ordered a set to try out. Pullman was a builder of specialist luxury sleeper carriages, who had a knack for publicity, and after finding out how well the paper wheels worked, he put in an order for more and used them as a selling point on his carriages. Sure enough, more and more people wanted Orland's new paper wheels. So much so, he ended up opening several more workshops just to keep up with demand, with the main plant being opened on the grounds of Pullman's Chicago Carriage Works. By 1893, over a hundred thousand of these paper wheels were in service. For nearly 30 years, these wheels were a major part of every passenger railroad, providing travellers with quieter, comfier rides. Orland's paper reign of supremacy, however, soon came to a very quick end. While the paper wheels were sturdy, they were nowhere near as durable as the solid metal ones and were known to break under load meaning a well-packed passenger carriage could cause them to fail. By the late 1890s, wooden carriages were slowly being phased out for much safer steel ones. These were much heavier, and combined with the extra strain from braking, would often lead to the wheels either failing or wearing out much quicker. On top of this, new steel wheel designs and development in suspension helped cancel out noise just as much as the paper ones while still being significantly stronger and safer. With all these innovations and Pullman's death, in 1897, paper wheels fell out of public favour and were eventually declared unsafe by the Interstate Commerce Commission in 1915, requiring all paper wheels be taken out of service. The former paper wheel company went into decline and the workshops either closed or started producing other components instead. Overall, paper wheels are a brief but rather unique footnote in rail history. While the idea sounds goofy in theory, in practice they actually turned out to be quite useful performing significantly better than anyone would have initially thought. Sure, they weren't as strong as steel wheels, but given the lack of decent suspension and the alternatives at the time, they filled a pretty niche but important role. So the lesson here then is perhaps, just because something seems crazy on paper, doesn't mean it's crazy in practice. Subscribe for more.